What's happening, Apple Biters? Brian Tong here. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple, and I'm back and baked like a fresh cookie from the oven, like a snickerdoodle. Now, Apple just announced their recent earnings report for the first fiscal quarter of 2013 that covers the holiday season, and it was another record quarter, posting $13.1 billion of profit on revenue of $54.5 billion. Now, they sold 47.8 million iPhones compared to 37 million in the same quarter last year. 22.9 million iPads were sold versus 15.4 million last year. But iMacs dropped from 4.1 million compared to 5.2 a year ago, and the Big A blamed the lower sales on iMac supply constraints. Now, the record numbers still didn't meet Wall Street's high expectations, but Tim Cook addressed the supply chain rumors that Apple may have cut iPhone 5 orders on weak demand for the product. Cook said, because of the complex supply chain and its multiple sources, it's really impossible to interpret a single data point and make a general assessment about the overall business. He also danced around the Apple TV question again. Now, the iPhone rumor mills have been making sure to keep it in the headlines with recent talks of an incoming 4.8-inch screen iPhone called the iPhone Math, according to the translation in the China Times. And come on, guys, the name iPhone Math makes total sense too. Now, Russian website Apple Digger even went as far as to create a video render of what the larger screen iPhone would look like. And look at that. It looks really good. But then reality hit and Digitimes, one of the sites that started the rumor, is now backtracking that claim and is now saying that Apple only plans to launch two new 4-inch models in 2013, a next-gen 5S and an iPhone 5 that is cheaper to produce with possibly a plastic body. And that's if you believe that story or not. Now, in more future plans from Apple, according to a Chinese website called My Drivers, a Foxconn insider has revealed that the iPad 5 will sport a new design with the slimmer side bezels of the iPad mini and chamfered edge corners. But Brian, what does that mean? Well, Jamie, a chamfer refers to an angular cut or furrow in woodworking. You might refer to it as a beveled edge. Thanks, Charlie. Now, you guys could have guessed the big A's plans, and we said the same thing when the iPad mini design was revealed, setting up the future full-size iPad look as well. Also, Reuters reports that production for the regular iPad screen has nearly halted by sharp core as demand has shifted over to the iPad mini. It also potentially points to a different screen moving forward for the next-gen full-size iPad. All right, now we don't have an app of the week this week, but this is an app you guys should all be paying attention to. It's called Mailbox from the orchestra team. It's launching for free in the coming weeks, and it's an all-new take on accessing and using your mailbox. It has this really cool swipe functionality that allows you to keep or trash emails, and the best is a snoozed email feature with a left swipe that then lets you deal with specific emails later for a time that you set. So you can focus on what's important, and if you're a zero mailbox type of person, this is worth checking out. Now, I'm super amped about this app, and you can reserve your spot in line for the rollout of this free app at the link you see here and learn more about the Mailbox app. All right, to the quick bites. An Apple insider has discovered job listings on Apple's website looking for a new engineer to test the next version of iOS's new APIs and frameworks. Now, we know iOS 6 saw the least amount of change, and Apple's mobile OS has a lot of catch-up to do these days. And in a little fun story from the past, Verizon had planned to make Siri an Android exclusive on all their Android devices on their network until Apple swooped in to purchase Siri. The story in the Huffington Post says Verizon actually signed a deal with Siri in 2009, months before Apple bought the company. There were also unreleased commercials made by the big V to show Siri as an Android feature. Now, that probably worked out for Verizon with Google's top-notch voice recognition, but are you the Apple Biters still even using Siri regularly? Let us know at the at CNET.com and we'll read your thoughts next week. And finally, you know we like to monkey around here on the show, but check this out. The Smithsonian Zoo, along with 12 other zoos, is participating in a program called Apps for Apes. Now, it's leveraging the touchscreen interactivity of the iPad to enrich the lives of apes in captivity. 10 apps were identified as key apps, including music, drawing, and game apps, and Koi Pond was one of the popular apps. What a coincidence, because my favorite app is Koi Pond. 
Now this might sound familiar from a previous story, but they've taken it to the next level, and their hope is to tap into the creative outlet of the apes' minds and one day even connect orangutans across the continent with FaceTime. Have you guys seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes? You don't want to do that. And yes, for those of you rolling your eyes earlier, monkeys are different than apes because they have a tail where apes don't, but they are both primates. I didn't know that. See, you learn a lot when you watch this show. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode, and it's good to be back with my family, you, the Apple Biters. Email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me, Brian Tong, and we'll read some of your responses next week. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another bite of the apple.